Hi everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda and Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers and it's time for... Send us your questions, we've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Been a good week. Another hot one. It's been a hot <laughs> week. It was 96 yesterday. That's pretty warm. It's not stopping us though, we're still on the go every day. We just pick and choose the times that we're out. In fact, on Wednesday of last mm. week, she was in a big golf tournament called the Augusta. Those of you that follow us on Facebook, at Villages Newcomers on Facebook, you saw that she, of all the golfers, <laughs> got closest to the pin. <laughs> she was red hot that day, and I did not get to play because of my hand, but you see I'm not in the brace anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I'm about ready to get back out there real soon. But she did a great job. I was really proud of her. Aww. And uh, we got together with friends, went to the town square. We went bicycle riding last night, but it was later. Went bicycle riding. And we have a cart video. I like it. It's a little uh, cart video through the news section. And that's going to come out for you on Thursday. If I get it finished, it'll come out for you on Thursday. But uh, it's been a good week. Let's get right to those shout outs. When we bump into you guys on the street, quite often you ask for pictures, and we're happy to do that. If you like, after you take that picture, send us a copy, and we'll try to get those on the show. Also, if you're wearing one of those Jerry and Linda t-shirts, and you want us to put your picture on, just send us a copy of that as well. We appreciate you. That's Bob and Elisa near their new home in Bradford. Any other shout outs from you? Well, we did. We we have a couple more. Uh, shout out to Leo, uh, sent us something really nice in the mail. And we also have a shout out to Mary Jane and Mike from Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Look at this. They stitched these little cute little tea towels. Did you say Minnesota? I said Minnesota. <laughs> Look at that. Hot dog gizmo. He loves it. Look at that. Hot, Hot dog, dog gizmo. gizmo. And then another one. That has the ventures of Jerry and Linda. Look at the palm trees. In just, the kitchen. I am not ready to be in the kitchen, but I might. We wanted to do a video, but she's not quite ready for that. <laughs> a few weeks ago, we had a letter from a viewer that liked the Sandhill Cranes, but thought they were quiet, thought they didn't make any noise. Our viewer, Ron Pass, sent us this video. Check this out if you think they're quiet. And before we get to our first question, we want to remind you guys, please send us your questions. We're running out. We're running out of good questions anyway. And tell you the truth, I really love the other questions just as much, the ones that are kind of off the wall. <laughs> send us your questions if you have one. And uh, if it's uh, doable, we'll put it on the air. Send it to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. By the way, a heads up for you guys. The price of postal stamps, just in case you didn't know, is increasing no! on August 29th. They're going to go up, buy a forever roll now, and you are good to go forever. <laughs> Although one roll might not last you forever. No. But anyway, buy them now and use them if you can. And We do not get paid by the United States Postal <laughs> Service. <laughs> Here we go. Question number one. Do folks that golf a lot tend to leave their bags on their carts, even when they're out socializing and visiting? How big an issue is theft of items from golf carts that can't be secured, like an automobile? Good question. That is a good question. Sometimes when we go out to eat in our golf cart, we'll have our bags, our golf bags on there, and it's a little worrisome, so I try to park where I can see from the, from the restaurant, but honestly, we don't know anybody that's been a victim here. Uh, I always jokingly tell Linda when we get out of the golf cart to lock her door. You know, of course, there are no doors to lock. But we don't know anybody that's been ripped off, do you? No. We went to the town square, like I said, the other night. Mm -hmm. And we had all kinds of stuff in our cart. Uh, and we left it in there, and it was fine when we got back. Yeah. The uh, squares are open. They're uh, open to everybody. I, said, I was going to say, I often, not often, but a couple times, I've actually left the keys in my golf cart. Oh, no, don't do that, people. But uh, luckily, 
It was still there when I got back. <laughs> we saw a guy at the town square the other night. Did you see what he had? No. He had a wheel lock like the oh, uh, yes. like the tow people put on your car. Yes. And he put it on the front wheel of his vehicle and locked it down. He had the key in his pocket and went off. Impossible to drive that car away. Mm. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I would do. I would forget it was on there, put my cart in reverse yeah. to go back yeah. and probably tear yeah. it up to yeah. tear up the uh, fenders on my golf cart. Yeah. Paul, to answer your question, we don't see much of a problem with thievery, but the squares are open. It's not just 60, 70, 80 year old villagers in there. It's anybody that comes in can come in and enjoy the music. Mm -hmm. So if you park your cart on the square, a lot of people are going to be walking by that cart. Just use your best judgment. This question is from Valerie. When we finally do get a golf cart, do you know of any places that give lessons? We did some checking, Valerie. And what we what we found was that uh, not really, but the village's golf cars told us that the village's insurance company does seminars on uh, golf cart operation. So you could call the village's insurance company and uh, probably get a seminar on that. I also called Villages Discount Carts, and they said there's a gentleman there that will actually teach you uh, about operating your golf cart and safety. And uh, you could call Villages Discount Golf Carts, and uh, they would try to hook you up. But that's all we know. That's great. Speaking of golf carts, we want to bring up a quite serious matter. We have noticed some accidents being reported in the last few months and a couple of fatalities and one other very serious wreck. And I wanted to read you an excerpt from the newspaper. I'll leave out the name of the person, but uh, just to talk about golf carts a little bit. A villager was killed in a golf cart crash at Brownwood Bridge. This gentleman of the village of Monarch Grove was 57 years old, driving a green 2021 Yamaha golf cart at 10.30 p.m. Saturday, southbound on the golf cart bridge when he appeared to strike the curb located on the left-hand side of the bridge. According to the accident report, after striking the curb, the golf cart struck the guardrail. After hitting the guardrail, he was ejected from the cart which then landed on top of him. When officers arrived on the scene, the golf cart was lying on his neck, the report said. That, I'm reading you that because we're a big proponent of seatbelts. Mm -hmm. I like the seatbelt. You know, there's a divide on everything these days. Some people don't want seatbelts. I don't want to be trapped inside that cart when it rolls over. Other people don't want to be thrown out of the cart. It's up to you to decide, but we think that the seatbelts save lives. And uh, we, on our first golf cart, the first golf cart that we owned did not have seatbelts, and we had them added. It cost about 140 bucks, and it gave me a new level of confidence. Yes. Of course, the best thing is don't drive like an idiot. Don't drive when you're drinking alcohol. That's true. Um, if you have armrests, put them down. Keep yourself in that cart. We've seen people slide out of carts when they turn corners and things like that. Uh, they're not really dangerous <laughs> machines, but they can be dangerous if you don't operate them properly. But please, uh, get educated, and if you think seatbelts will help you, get them for your cart. Here's a letter from Lee. I see in a lot of the videos, most of the men wear polo shirts and shorts. I'm a t-shirt guy. Are those mostly staged? Or is there an unwritten dress code of no t-shirts, or are they frowned upon? <laughs> no, we love our t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Lee, the photos aren't staged. <laughs> if you see photos on a golf course, standard golf course etiquette everywhere is wear a collared shirt, up like a polo shirt. So that's why you're seeing collared shirts. But if you go to any restaurant here, you're going to see plenty of t-shirts and plenty of shorts. We just, we got a new fancy closet the other day. <laughs> we got uh, we got a two-tier system now, and it's all white, and it's pretty. <laughs> but if you look at our new closet system, you're going to see my clothes don't look all that fancy. No, but I have them organized. Here's the t-shirts, and here's the collared shirts, and we're going to stay that way. <laughs> I counted, and it, uh, you guys will laugh. I counted 17 pairs of khaki shorts. 
Uh, probably two were in the laundry. So maybe I have 19 <laughs> pairs of khaki shorts. I've got rid of a bunch of them. I'm really paring it down, but uh, you you can uh, see that we're casual. Yes. Most people are casual. You could go into the fanciest restaurant here, which would be the Chop House or Bluefin yes. or Red Sauce. You're going to see people in T-shirts. Don't worry. This is from Kim. She goes, hi, you've only talked about un underground pools and the cost. I guess above ground pools are not allowed or at least frowned upon. Um, not allowed and probably frowned upon. <laughs> so no underground pools. All the pools, if you go to get a pool and if you want to put one in, it does have to be approved by the, what is it? The ARC. ARC. Architectural Review Committee. Uh -huh. Oh, we don't see anything wrong with above ground pools, but they don't allow outside structures of any kind here. Yeah. So that's why they're frowned upon. Yep, no above ground pools. You'll have to get on the waiting list and probably wait a year and a half for an in-ground pool. Here's my favorite question today. Okay. This is my favorite. I have one every week. Last week with the pigeons. Pigeon coop, yeah. <laughs> it's from Fancy. Oh, I like her name. Fancy is a 58-year-old ex-cheerleader. Oh. I'm divorced from a lazy scallywag, uh -oh. but I'm still full of life and energy. If I move to the villages, will I be able to find love? I don't know if she'll find love, but she can find pickleball, and she can find golf, and she can find a hundred swimming pools. She'll find a lot of opportunities to find She can people. find shuffleboard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, finding love will be up to you, but what is a scallywag? <laughs> Now, I know what it is in terms, of, since an old history teacher, of the Civil War. I know what a scallywag was, but what is it today? I looked it up. Check this out. Teacher. A scallywag is a person who is known to be a treachering, lying son of a oh. and usually smells bad. <laughs> that was in the dictionary. <laughs> Our Google. I got that off Google. <laughs> there are other definitions, too, but that's the funnest one. <laughs> well... To tell you the truth, Fancy, we did a show on singles almost a year ago. You remember that show? I do. We had three people sitting on that sofa back there, and we talked about being single in the villages. We're going to check back in with one of them today, and we're going to find out if his life has improved since he's moved here. Um, I got here as a single in 2019, and I moved to villages because I heard that it had every activity you could want and it was very popular for singles because hopefully you could find a companion um, and maybe find love. I went to all the, joined a couple of the clubs, joined a couple of the single clubs. I went to the squares every night. I ended up uh, going to a couple of the um, Places that have karaoke and sang. Um, and then one day a friend of mine said, have I got a girl for you? And we met at 2J's for lunch. And she's now my wife, Phyllis. Well, that is great. And I had the pleasure of being there the night that you popped the question. You had a big party about Christmas time. I did. And had lots of people over. And she, luckily, she said yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good thing. And so how long have you been married now? We got married in February six, of this year. Six and a half months. And how are things? Great. Great. And you've already changed houses. Yep. We bought a house uh, at the end of May. So just now getting settled in, getting moved. It's been a lot of fun. Ready to be done with that part, though. <laughs> so any advice for Fancy? She's 58. She's thinking about moving here. Can she find love? Absolutely. I would say get involved in Single in the Villages. They have a ton of activities going on. And if nothing else, you're never alone. I want to thank you guys for having us in your home today. And it's just great to see a happy ending. <laughs> thank you. And, and thank you for coming. And thank you for following up with us. See how we're doing. Don't you love a happy ending? <laughs> yes, I do. 
Jim is a great guy, and he and Phyllis look very happy, and uh, we're just thrilled for yeah. both of them. This question is from Faye. Do you encounter big spiders outside or inside the house? I'm very scared of them. Well, I'm very scared of big spiders too, but I have not seen very many big spiders at all. Have you seen any? Not really. I haven't seen any big spiders. Have you seen any? <laughs> no. Okay. And maybe a teeny, teeny, tiny a baby. one in the corner of the house once. Yeah, we have not had a problem with spiders, okay. but again, your your questions, your questions spur me on. So I did a little research <laughs> because I'm I'm a mouth breather when I sleep. My <laughs> nose is congested sometimes. I breathe through my mouth. So You're not the only one though. <laughs> I had heard that of the myth that in their lifetime people swallow an average of eight spiders while they sleep. <laughs> We're gonna have people with screens on their mouth now. <laughs> so, so I looked it up, and the question was it was here in, in Google. Do spiders crawl in your mouth while you sleep? Luckily for us, the fact that people swallow eight spiders in their sleep yearly, 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 oh my God, what is, the hell we are, <laughs> is not true, not even close. Oh, good. <laughs> this flies in the face of both spider and human biology. It makes it highly unlikely that a spider would ever end up in your mouth. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, they're not even ending up in our house, so not an issue. <laughs> this is from Mark. I have to know the story with Linda in what appears to be a Kevlar helmet and a flak jacket in the Mailbag Monday collage. Well, that was when we were visiting our son um, at one of his duty places, I believe, and um, he let me put it on. I just wanted to see how heavy it was, and man, is that gear heavy. I could hardly stand there for that picture. <laughs> That's our middle son. He's yeah. in the Navy. He's uh, uh, recently selected for commander. We're very proud of him. Mm -hmm. He was leading a team that was training. He was a riverine. A riverine is the brown water Navy. They uh, are in small boats and they patrol rivers. In this case, he was sent to Iraq. But to plan for that, they were sent to Fort Knox, Kentucky, which is only maybe 45 minutes from where we lived. We never get to see him. We drove over there, got together. He had all his equipment. She tried it on. She looked pretty good in it. <laughs> it's heavy, isn't it? Extremely heavy. I don't see how they walk around. But that's what led to that. Just a photo op with our son and, and some of his equipment. And now it's time for our last question. <laughs> it's from Karaoke Man. Why are there no painted driveways in villa neighborhoods? I thought that was a funny question uh -huh. because there are painted driveways everywhere. So I got on Google Earth and I looked at a villa neighborhood. No painted driveways. I looked at another villa neighborhood. No painted driveways. That was funny. So we called the ARC to ask, 
why won't you let people paint their driveways? In the villas. In the villas. They said it's not true. You can paint your driveway. But you have to have your neighbors sign off on the color that you choose, and you have to get 75% of them to agree. Wow, that's a lot of red tape. It is a lot of red tape, um, but I guess it's possible. So you can get your driveway painted, but we don't see many. Uh, I did go back and look afterwards, and I found a couple that were lightly speckled. Yeah, you could hardly tell. You could hardly tell. It's doable. But like she said, you have to jump through some hoops. And did y'all notice I got my hair cut and colored? No more gray. <laughs> did you have gray? <laughs> right there. <laughs> a bunch. <laughs> it's expensive. That's over a hundred bucks to do that. It's expensive. Come on, people. <laughs> right, Gizzy? <laughs> but see how beautiful it makes me. <laughs> Right? I think Ben Franklin's pretty beautiful, too. <laughs> See what I did there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's time for the feature that you've all been waiting for. Gizmo, his thoughts, and uh, maybe a joke. Take it away, Gizmo. Susan asked me a darn good question. She said, Gizmo, how old are you? You act like a puppy. Well, thank you, Susan. But actually, I'm 12 years old. Or, if you want to talk about dog years, in dog years, the first year of my life was like 15 human years. And then the second year of my life was like nine. So after two years old, I was 24 human years. Every year after that adds five. So, I'm 12. And that's the same as 74 as a human. But don't worry. Just between you and me, I still feel like a puppy. My friends here might not like this one. Do you guys know... I said guys. Hope I didn't offend anybody. I mean everyone. Do you know what the dog catcher's favorite song is? I'll tell you. You ain't nothing but a pound dog, crying all the time. Pound dog, get it? <laughs> As usual, you nailed it, brother. Good job. <laughs> Guys, remember, if you have questions, please send them to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. We're in need of some good questions. We keep getting the same questions over and over, and that's going to make for a boring mailbag Monday. Send us some good <laughs> questions. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Mailbag Monday. And if you see us out and about, please say hello. We love talking to you. And press that like if you like our video today. Until next time. See you when you get here. <laughs>